I just can't believe they put such a nightmare inducing thing <laughs> into children's bedrooms. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of open source Linux in general, and uh, basically anything we find interesting. <laughs> I know, warning, we try to have a good time on the show, so if you want somebody to put yeah. you to sleep, there's, there's plenty of other shows <laughs> to watch. <laughs> kind of excited because I got a little piece of history heading my way in the mail, Jill Bryan. Oh, nice, Ben. I can't wait to see it. I hope it gets here. I, I've been kind of just looking for them for a while. What it is, it's the first FireWire interface ever made. Now, ah, this, so this is cool. all the way from 2001, because I want to share the history of why we ended up with FireWire interfaces instead of like USB, why we had that weird period yeah. of time, and then we moved on to Thunderbolt. So um, having a good time with that, uh, hopefully... It'll be here by the end of the week, and I'm finishing up another video on configuring Debian 12 for production audio if you want to set up like a super tight system to do it, and you don't need all the whiz -bang stuff, and that'll probably be out maybe later this week for patrons. Keep an eye out for it. How about you? The You, you play an old game with us on Tuesdays yes. and Fridays, and you did pretty good last Friday, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I, I won four maps for, you know, the, the four prizes and and the final i i didn't get the cup but <laughs> i did get a prize just the satisfaction of, of winning four maps on friday that was that was awesome that's probably that's more than i've ever won in one uh, <laughs> one competition if you don't know we do track mania on tuesdays and fridays you're welcome to come pop in with us it's like retro racing platform it's just fun we got a gr yeah, good yeah it's group so much of people fun. that get together and yeah i think you mm -hmm. at least won the same amount I did because like I typically don't yeah. even win four maps during a week. Yeah. Well, that's a good time. <laughs> it really was. And I love the maps uh, last week. Those were some of my my favorites and I think that's that's why they just gelled with me. <laughs> mm. But we do have um one of our community members getting ready to head over to Latvia. Yeah, so Strider, the creator of Lutris in our chat. I I hope you have so much fun Strider at Ubuntu Summit 2023 in Riga, Latvia. He's doing two talks about Lutris and gaming on Lutris and and Linux, just Linux in general. <laughs> very That's excited, be a fun and we're time. very proud. <laughs> I hope everybody has a good time at the Ubuntu Summit. Uh, um, yeah, Aggie's going to be there, so yeah, absolutely fun for all. <laughs> all right. Kernel 6.6 is on. What's yes, new on it? it? Is. Anything fascinating? Oh, yeah. This is actually a very interesting release. So on Sunday, Linus Torvald, the awesome creator of Linux, released Linux kernel 6.6 .6 with some actually very major new features, including enhanced performance for AMD processors with the integration of the new EEVDF scheduler, which actually replaces the CFS scheduler code, and AMD dynamic boost control support for greater control of performance op optimizations on AMD processors, temperature and EDAC support boost for the AMD Zen 5 family of processors, and also AMD P state features control via CPU power. So lots of love to AMD processors <laughs> in this release, which I was very excited about. And there are a ton of new gaming devices supported, including the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite gaming mouse, which I know a lot of Linux user users love and are happy that it's working on Linux. The Game Sci Sire T4 Khalid controller, the Steel Series Arctic Arctis One Xbox headset, Rumble for Google Stadia controller is now working. Woohoo! I can finally race my Stadia <laughs> controller. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I know Ven has one. <laughs> and in the Nvidia Shield controller um, has battery re reporting now. And there's just one of the biggest things that. I was really happy about 
there has been a huge problem lately with newer Lenovo laptop keyboards not working on Linux. And the Linux kernel 6.6 fixes a lot of them, including the Lenovo V14, V15, and the G14 AMN. And I, I personally know two people who bought two of those laptops who had to return them because the keyboard was not working on Linux. <laughs> so I'm happy to see this. Yay! So there's always every every time we get a new Linux kernel, it's better and better, has more hardware enablement and more enhancements and cleans up bugs. And this was a really major re release for those of us who love you know running Linux on CPUs, GPUs, and laptops and gaming hardware. Toasters, <laughs> refrigerators. Oh. Yeah, toasters, re refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> now you might be wondering, like, how do I get a hold of this? I, do I head over to you know kernel download dot cu dot no no no. If you're running Arch, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, it's going to be available first or possibly second week in November via the nice. monthly ISO refresh. If Yay. you're on Ubuntu twenty four zero four, it'll probably show up around April. If you're running yeah. Debian twelve, well, you, you just download it, compile it, mm -hmm. install yeah. it. <laughs> That also go, that holds true for my brothers and sisters running Gentoo as well. Yeah. Because I know the work at is like, come on, man, I can do that too. Yeah, it just runs an arch. <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> things that is so uncommon. You know, if you want somebody to look at you sideways a little bit, you're like, yeah, just compile. I've had this conversation. <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, just download the kernel, do the changes and compile it. And they're like, what? But let's stick with this theme of um, getting people to look at you sideways. That's when you tell them, hey, man, install this run file for your <sighs> NVIDIA drivers. Yes. What? <laughs> no, wizard, burn him. He practices the dark arts. No. But no. Hey, there's a new version out for the binary driver, which is kind of really the only viable option right now for NVIDIA. And what do we got? 5452902. Bunch of updates in this. Because uh, we talked about the beta release on Linux Gamecast a few weeks back. We did. Uh, but this makes all of that official. Yes. Big things in this. This so adds exciting. all of the bits that you're going to need for the nightlight. And once again, it's called night color features uh, between if you're running GNOME or KDE under mm -hmm. Wayland. That's mm -hmm. a big one. VR now kind of works with Wayland, which is also good. And that's because they added support for DRM leasing. VDPAU is going to work with X Wayland. Very huge. nice. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who still use VD, if you don't know what VDPAU is, it's something we used to have to use back when we had one core in our uh -huh. CPU and we wanted to play these incredibly overpowered um, HD videos that were 720p. Yes. <laughs> we had no illusions that we would ever be able to watch a 1080p video. That was just theoretical stuff back then. Uh, but it's nice to know that's working. Prime render offload has been added to uh, the Yay. Vulcan Wayland WSI, which is neat. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we have experimental support, finally, finally. for frame buffer consoles. Now, Yay. if you had an NVIDIA card, or you have an NVIDIA card, I got an NVIDIA card on a system right now that we're using on the um, thread rubber. You do the thing. You know the maneuver. Control Alt F1. You know that, right? You're like, mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Some, all right. <laughs> some people, no. Well, oh, you, you got to get to that console. You've done <laughs> something. Something's froze. Something is usually. It's not usually not a good thing when you hit Control Alt F1 and you're in a hex session, and you would see the big chunky jumbo text. This is going to add support for <laughs> um, frame buffer. Now you yeah. have to enable this manually. Which is going to be kind of a mixed blessing because you're not going to have the big text anymore. You're going to have the little mice type text. I know, the, the one that's too hard for me to read. <laughs> yes. And Jordan on Linux Gamecast, when we were talking about the beta version, <laughs> he brought up a good point because he's got an NVIDIA set up on his uh, HTPC in his living room. And he's like, okay, that's kind of grr because it forces him to get up off the couch and walk and read the mice text exactly. to see what's going yeah. on instead of being able to sit on the couch. So, but then yeah. again. If you want to keep your hipster text, which I do, you don't have to do anything, but it is an option that you can enable to, yes. you know, just have that there. Um, here's kind of the really, really super big one that's been driving some people up the wall. And again, 
by some people, I mean, we're like, there was like six or seven people that installed the run files. I'm one of them. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, if you want to install the NVIDIA drivers, you got to, you got to kill the server, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you got to shut down X, you got to shut down your Good. login manager, light DM, GDM, whatever you're running, kill it, get to the console, do everything from TTY. Mm-hmm. No longer the case. Now Yay! you can just open up terminal, chmod X, the run <laughs> file, run it. It's going to try to scare you a little bit. It's going to be like, bugga bugga, if you do this, you know, I might, I don't know, do a thing, but probably not. But click OK, and you click OK, it installed, I did it on this box, mm-hmm. ran it, no problem. Woohoo, that's so exciting. Ever. Right? Uh, yeah, that's something that's always been a pain. And for, you know, to getting users to use the dot .run file, for them having them exit, you know, when they're not, yeah, not intermediate or advanced users, they, they get very scared. <laughs> so... It's kind of a rare use case to be using the run file. The reason I use a run file instead of um, the, because you can get the NVIDIA long live branch with Debian 12, or, mm-hmm. you know, if you got Fedora or if you get whatever you're running. Yeah. I'm using DaVinci Resolve and I'm also using Blackmagic, and, which means I'm running Blackmagic, but I also have some hardware. And they're like, you know what? We support this version of the Linux driver for NVIDIA. That run file never updates. I can go, cool. This version of the driver, I can install and never have to worry about system updates updating that driver. So a limited use case, but a very good reason to manually install the run file. Not something, again, you probably want to do on your desktop. And I understand. You can go, but then you can do app mark hold. I could, but it's so much cooler to use the run file, all right? Um, (laughs) Yes. It is easy, you know, now, nowadays to do it, of course, with the, in Ubuntu to update uh, the drivers in Ubuntu directly, but I still use the, the dot .run files. I always have. I just, just years of using Linux, <laughs> just always have. But Jill Riot, there's a new yeah. way to get your Discord yes. on. Yes. Oh yeah, Jill, one more thing. Yes. Have you heard about Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't use it here on LGC. But I have used Matrix for, for my other communities. Um, and, but there's great news about Discord. There's a new Discord flat pack. But this one is not the unofficial one. This one is, a verify, is verified on FlatHub from the Discord company themselves. <laughs> this is just really, really cool. There's been an unofficial, you know, version of Discord available, of course, on FlatHub for many, many years. And even I've used that one before. But now Discord is maintaining it. This is really great news. And in fact, the unofficial flat pack of Discord has been downloaded three million times. So no doubt that was on Discord's radar. <laughs> That's a lot of downloads. <laughs> and Honestly, we have a lot of thanks to give to Cassidy James, a, a Flatpak, Flathub developer advocate, who has been reaching out to app creators to bring their software to Flathub. And I'm sure, you know, the Deb, the .deb Electron app will still be available, but it is nice to see the Discord company supporting Linux even more and all the different Linux distros by, by creating a, a, an official Flatpak. That's awesome. <laughs> now, the yeah. one thing the application, desktop application, can do that you can't do in the browser is, to the best of my knowledge, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, is when you're playing a game, yeah. you know, with the desktop Steam integration, it says, hey, person's playing this or person's using this application, you know. You can't do that with the flat pack version. They make that. Yeah. There's a couple of things that you just can't do with it. And, you know, that, that's like one of the big ones is game activity does not work. And there's no workaround for that. Okay. So just keep that in mind. But spin it positively. If you're worried about privacy, there you go. You don't have to worry about telling Discord not to tell people what game you're playing, which might be good if you're just hooked on Cookie Clicker and you're like, I have a crippling <laughs> addiction to Cookie Clicker and I don't want people to know. And you forget, you know, you never have to worry about it again. Install the Flatpak version. Um, Unrestricted yeah. file access, rich presence. Those are going to be missing by default because Flatpak, because Sandbox, but, you know, there's ways to work around 
that uh, not really relevant to me. Not because I'm, um, you know, uh, say the thing, then I don't like containerized applications on the desktop. Or I'll go yell at that cloud. Fine. <laughs> More important, like for me, I just run it in a tab or I run it on Android. I don't run the desktop applications. What I'd like to see Discord do is bring feature parity up on Linux closer to the Windows client. Yeah. That'd be neat. Who remembers Teddy Rockspins? Joe? Oh, I absolutely do. <laughs> and, and, you know, as much as a, it, it, Teddy Rockspin creeped me out a little bit, it was extremely cool technology. <laughs> I'll give it that. <laughs> I wasn't the right age. I was an I was an adult by the time those came out. I just can't believe they put such a nightmare inducing thing <laughs> into children's bedrooms. Yeah. The, the villainy and vileness of this horrific <laughs> horrific Aww. thing. Talking and moving. No, no, no. We need something more soothing, a little more family friendly. <laughs> yes. And that's where Daddy Ruxpin comes in. Now, that's something you can fall asleep next to while feeling yeah. secure, just in time for <laughs> Halloween to be over. Because let's face it, the real, if you're in North America, if you're in the United States, the real horror month is coming in. That's November. That's when you got to get together with your family for Thanksgiving. Way scarier than <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Way more frightening. Daddy Ruxpin, he is here to haunt your dreams and traumatize friends and family. Now, of course, as we were saying, that name sounds kind of familiar because, you know, it's based on that OG Teddy Ruxpin. It was just a bear. There it is, kind of doing the thing. You know, what the original Teddy Ruxpin did very little more than just like wiggled around when you shoved a cassette tape into it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Now, this modern nightmare incarnate, it's powered by Arduino FFT. Well, it's using, yeah, the FFT Fast Warrior Transfer. Plus a Raspberry Pi 2040. Yay. Which was like, hey, I'll sneak this thing in. And speaking of mm -hmm. FFT, fast forward your transfer algorithm, that does all the audio snooping to help control your animatronic bits. So, like, he's like, hey, man, I built everything in Adobe Audition. Oh, but I mean, you can do this in Adore, Reaper, Bitvig, whatever you want. It's not a problem there. There's a nice little video explaining everything and along with everything else. And it's 3D printed, easy enough to stick together and make uh all this is going to be in our show notes so all you need is a cassette tape don't worry if you got kids they're mm -hmm. probably hipsters they probably have asked for cassette tapes you can go borrow one off them yeah <laughs> take a little walkman ah oh, man and then you can have an adorable little teddy bear oh yeah now the, nowadays we just have um audio activated like dancing flowers and things like that because you can buy yeah. those for, like you know, a few pens and like, and they just wiggle and scream and, and no, I'm good. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we got a couple of people to thank this week, Joe. Yeah, we sure do. We've got uh, Don M who resubbed for 36 months and also Mir PPC who resubbed for 48 months. That's that is pretty surprisingly cool. more difficult than trying to touch your fingers in your return video. I'm like, yeah, there we go. Oh, Thanks too. Yeah, yeah. Guess. <laughs> well, if you're looking at him, Jill, it's not very difficult. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I'd have other have problems if I like look at my fingers and I'm like, oh man. So, uh, hey, if you like the show, you want to support us, head over to linuxgamecast.com forward slash support. We've got a bunch of bonus things. We've got LibrePay. Somebody sent us some uh, millibitcoin. Thank you. That's oh, awesome. Yay. We can convert Thank that so into um, stuff for the studio. It's quite fascinating. But if you can spare buck a week head over to patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast that gets you into our discord it gets you the live and uncut versions of these shows early access to things like i'm gonna be putting out production audio under debian I'll show you how to do that nice. a little bit early you get a preview of it you get to participate in you know when you watch a youtube video or a video somewhere else and you're like let me give you some advice on how some changes that you should make to this video and like homie that video is made <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> But if you're that type of person and you would like to actually see some of your suggestions end up in the final product, that's a way to do it. But we do appreciate anything you can spare. Yay. And <laughs> most importantly, you're going to end up in our credits at the end. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Speaking of which, Joe. Yeah. We're let's ready do it. To 
to read the names of all our awesome patrons. Let's see how quickly I can do this. <laughs> we have Ben Stone and we have Jill Bryant, of course, your two hosts. <laughs> and we have our advisors, Omegas and our Theron to thank. We have our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, Drummer7, our Chicago Kicks people, Super Dust Out, Empty, <laughs> our Sea Monsters, Truggy, Veritanuda, Justin, our Death Notes, Ogiwan and Foxton, Dog, Swine, Piper, our Chairlings, uh, <laughs> every, everyone else, because <laughs> I can't read it that quickly. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Everybody. Love you all. Brace yourselves. <laughs> Thanksgiving is coming. Yes. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. We'll see you dun, next dun, week. Dun. Bye, all. Love you all. <laughs>